Welcome to the Texas Values Report. This is Jonathan Sines, president of Texas Values. Good to be with you on another glorious week in the state of Texas. Hope you're doing well. Uh, the sun is shining where I am. I don't know how things are going where you are. Uh, it's getting a little chilly out there. And, you know, there is a clear sign of Christmas uh, in the air, as some people like to say, as I've uh, gotten a little bit celebratory here on the show with some visuals as well for Christmas. Um, and so, you know, hope you're um, not being naughty and being nice, getting your some of your uh, shopping done and all those good things. This show is about the issues of faith, family, and freedom in the arenas of the courts, the legislature, and the media. So, and it focuses on the work that we do at Texas Value. So um, this is the 405th, uh, we're all already into 400 consecutive episodes of the Texas Values Report. And if you're watching on Facebook, you want to share this, like it, put it into some groups, because we're going to have a great and meaningful and timely conversation about Christmas, about what your rights are, and a variety of different things that relate to some work that we're doing now and we've done early in the year. Um, and if you're familiar with some of our work, during this time of year, we focus on an issue called the Merry Christmas Texas Project. That is based on a state law in the state of Texas that we led the effort to pass that makes it clear that expressions and displays of Christmas are legal and okay in public schools in the state of Texas. And there's only a couple of days left. If you're watching this live on Thursday, there's only a couple of days left until kids get out of school for Christmas break. Maybe in your school, they're calling it holiday break, whatever the case may be. You have the right to talk about and celebrate Christmas and do things of historical significance for Christmas in public schools. That means even if they're religious in nature, if you're allowed for some type of gift exchange this time of year, your gift can be religious in nature. If you're allowed decorations or some type of party, you can mention Jesus. I mean, that's what the history of Christmas is about. Um, go to MerryChristmasTexas.com, MerryChristmasTexas.com, and you can find our website uh, as far as what your rights are. And let us know about what's happening in your public school. I'm going to go to the website here real quick and just do a screen share so people can see um, what I'm talking about um, in the website we have set up for protecting your rights to talk about Christmas in public schools. There it is right there. MerryChristmasTexas.com is the website. And that's because the conflicts have come up this time of year, uh, almost every year. As a matter of fact, I'll talk about one in just a minute. Uh, it didn't happen in schools, but it certainly was in Texas and in the public. But MerryChristmasTexas.com, find out everything you know about your rights in public schools to talk about and celebrate and have displays of Christmas for students and also employees. So, and let us know if you have any questions about that. We've got the legal and policy uh, knowledge and experience to help you navigate those things and push back if we need to, to make sure your rights are protected. We've gone to court before on these issues. We won a court case on this in 2016 when a an employee in Colleen ISD was told that her Christmas poster could not include the word Jesus. Jesus was singled out. They told her she had to rip it off or take the whole poster down. Uh, she said no, and we said no, and we went to court, and the judge said, yes, you win, essentially. And so we had a great victory for Christmas then. But a recent conflict came up on the issue of Christmas right here in the state of Texas, Taylor, Texas, there were, uh, there's were there been some national news on this. There were dueling Christmas parades. And why? That's because for many years, the Christmas parade in the small town of Taylor, Texas, northeast of Austin, um, has been led and put together mainly by a Christian group, a uh, pastor of a Christian church, and some other Christian ministries. And then recently, the drag queens tried to take over the parade, or they tried to uh, infiltrate the parade, or, or have their sexual views represented and displayed in this uh, parade. And uh, it didn't work out so well. I think the the main organizers um it took some issue with that. And so there ended up being two parades and the city withdrew their support and sponsorship of the Christian parade and gave it to the parade that included the drag queen. So uh, Jesus and Christians out for the Christmas parade and drag queens in is effectively what happened. And so um, the, the two parades went forward though, but right after that, on Monday, after the parade the two parades happened. The city tried to come up with a new ordinance that singled Christians out, that made it clear that if you had religious views, you couldn't be a part of a specific city-sponsored event. You couldn't participate or, or have your event sponsored. And so clearly singling out, singling out religious 
entities and groups, which includes churches, okay? Uh, and so Christians, again, couldn't participate and have the sponsorship of these events, but then I guess the drag queens could. And so we pushed back, the local citizens pushed back, we overloaded a meeting, and we got a victory. The mayor said, we're not going to deal with this right now, we're going to postpone it, we need to talk to our lawyer. So, um yeah, I guess so. I mean, we put out legal analysis on this issue, making it clear that there were major concerns and a clear constitutional violation to single out religious groups like that um, and to make it clear that they would not be able to be a part of these type of things in the city. So we'll see what happens on that, but a victory for now, all right, and a victory to keep Christ in Christmas. And so let us know if you hear of any conflicts coming up that are targeting Christ Christmas, particularly to try to single it out and reduce your rights and limit your rights or ban your rights. Uh, to have these type of displays in the public where a lot of times they try to single out Jesus or or Christ. That's what a lot of this revolves around. And so, and, and look, you can see by that evidence, we've been able to be have some success on this issue. Uh, another great reason, reason, excuse me, why to support us with a tax deductible donation at txvalues.org. We've got a $50,000 matching grant in place, as a matter of fact. And so, um, that is a great way for you to support the work that we do, and we need your support this time of year. Uh, and don't take my word for it. Fox News ran a national story on this issue. You can find that where they're talking about the dueling uh, Christmas parades. And so, you know, it seems for some of the groups that are in the, the drag queen business that nothing's off limits for them, right? I mean, public libraries, uh, school libraries, uh, public schools, you know, places where kids are, and, and now they want to take over or infiltrate and sexualize these uh, Christmas parades. Um, it, it's very concerning. And so we'll talk a little bit about that more in a minute. And also what happened at the federal level when the um, federal government has now created a new law uh, regarding the issue of same-sex marriage and excluding specific and strong religious freedom rights for those of us that have a biblical view on marriage. Um, and you know, this has been the definition of marriage between one man and one woman. But we put together a video earlier this year to talk about and to give you a little bit of detail of some of the work that we've been doing. And it's not quite that time of year where we're going to do a rundown of everything that's happened this year, count down the top 10 victories and all that. We'll do that in the next couple of weeks. But this video really talks about some stuff that we have been working on that some of it is still very timely, even though it was early in the year. And so uh, we like the product that we put together. So we thought that we would share it with you today. And we usually don't share videos when we do our Facebook Live and our broadcast. But so if you're listening on the radio, you can hear it, even though you might not be able to see it visually. But you can go to our social media page on Facebook and watch the video uh, broadcast. And uh, you might be on our app, right? Texas Values has an app for that. Download on iTunes and Google Play our Texas Values app so you can see more of this great work. But okay, so we're going to queue up the video and it runs for about five or six minutes, but it's pretty strong. So take a look at uh, some work we've been doing recently for Texas Values. Texas Values is the largest organization in the state of Texas that works on the issues of faith, family, and freedom. We're very excited about our 10 year anniversary. You're coming up on 10 years, man. Thank you. You guys have done a terrific job. Thanks for representing our values. This is Values Action, represented by all 254 counties in the state of Texas, and we have over 200,000 supporters, which includes parents in the state of Texas. We have received countless of emails and phone calls regarding some of the issues related to parental rights in our state. I'm here at the U.S. Supreme Court, and we're here on one of the most important and historic days of the pro-life movement. This is the moment. This is the time to take Roe head on. This is why we've marched, we've advocated, we've prayed. We've done all this work now for almost 50 years. The U.S. Supreme Court has announced that Roe versus Wade has been overturned. We're just so grateful for the work that's been done by Texas Values to make sure that our laws are reflective of the dignity and value of life. We've passed so much good legislation here in the state, you know, thanks in part to Texas Values, um, what you guys have done. It wasn't just celebration, it was about planning for the next steps. The battle has begun. This is the beginning of the beautiful part that we've been working for, and uh, we, we can't get fall asleep at the wheel. We've got to do everything we can to make sure that we continue to be a pro-life Texas, leading the way in a pro-life America. The Texas Heartbeat Act became effective on September 1st, 2021. It makes abortions illegal in Texas. 
once a heartbeat can be detected. And this can be down as early as five to six weeks. Hats off to Texas. Texas has been a friend of the unborn child for a long time now. You know, Jonathan, one reason that I love partnering and working with you guys at Texas Values is because we need to work on both levels of law and culture. We've got a great website set up, texasheartbeatlaw.com. Over 300 nonprofit pregnancy centers across the state of Texas that are designed to serve the needs of the babies and the mothers. Our job now is to help support the pregnancy centers in each state, to help support all of the different uh, systems in place, the social services, to increase funding to help mothers and babies. We know that genital mutilation and giving kids cross-sex hormones is not health care. Transgenderism is many things, but one of the main things that it is, is a medical scandal. And this is absolutely crazy bogus medical procedures because they're offering to fix someone's mental condition by removing a healthy body part. You and Texas Values have been champions of our children and supporting family values. It's more than just Texas Values, those are American values. A Supreme Court victory for football prayer. We were involved in supporting that case. This is Coach Kennedy, who we submitted a legal amicus brief in support of that. The main entity the supporting Coach Kennedy is Kelly Shackelford's group, First Liberty Institute. Justice Gorsuch and uh, five other justices of the Supreme Court uh, decided that not only could Coach Kennedy get his job back, but they declared that he did nothing wrong. Well, absolutely. I love working with you and the team, and uh, there's more to come. We have more work to do. We're still trying to protect all sports um, from biological males entering into that field and stealing those champions. Not only were being forced to compete against biological men and change in a locker room with biological men, we were being sidelined to men. Everybody knows that this is an affront to the civil liberties of women. We cannot get to a point in society where we use women as the substantiating force for the mental health of a male. We are winning all across the country on the issue of educational freedom right now, and that's something to be excited about. And we are deeply concerned about the radical woke takeover of our public schools as manifested by changes in the social studies standards because they guide what's taught in our public schools over five million students. Here we are again in 2022, another effort to take out in God we trust in Moses. Leave these historical figures and these concepts alone, including in God we trust that needs to go back in. These are established principles and important values and topics for our students to learn. Well, the board last night decided in a seven to two vote that they will not move forward with this review and revision process. Only what we're currently studying in social studies uh, is what is going to happen for your Texas kids in the future. So that's a huge victory. The Faith, Family and Freedom Forum, the largest faith and family public policy event in the state of Texas, The Church Ambassador Network ministers to the individuals who serve in government, Republican, Democrat, or Independent. It's our goal to have pastors engage government in a way that honors God and bears fruit that benefits our whole state. We've been doing this work through radio, also through Zoom. The Texas Values Report is a weekly show. Our partner organization, Texas Values Action, gives us a truly comprehensive approach to advocacy by allowing us to hold elected officials accountable based on their voting records at the ballot box. Through Texas Values Action, we produce the Faith and Family Legislative Scorecard, a critical educational and accountability tool for Texas voters to see where their legislators stood on faith and family legislation at the Capitol during the state legislative session. We also endorse and support pro-family candidates. Additionally, we produce the most comprehensive and widely used voters guide in the state equipping hundreds of thousands of Texans for both the primary and general elections at freevotersguide.com. Texas Values Action is the organization capable of effectively equipping and mobilizing value voters across the state of Texas. All of this activity cements the work that Texas Values has accomplished. When it comes to faith, family, and freedom in Texas, Texas Values continues to lead the way. All right, 
What'd you think? <laughs> okay. No, some good, uh, great work by Tracy Wong, putting that video together and other members of our team over the year, uh, putting together some of the highlights. Uh, but we truly do have a comprehensive approach to advocacy. Uh, we've been saying that for quite a long time, but um, it rings true when you watch a four or five minute video there and see some of the work we're doing in, in, uh, in so many different fields. And some people just work on policy. Some people just work on court cases. Some people just work on election issues. And that's fine. Though All three of those things are important. And sometimes just focusing on one has a tremendous value. But we found for our work and the as we continue to grow, the ability to, to work in so many of those different arenas, that's the way you can have a comprehensive approach to advocacy. And so we'll continue to do that. As a matter of fact, we're trying to add to our team. All right. So if you want to be a part of the Texas Values team. You want to make history? We made history this year, okay? Overturning Roe versus Wade, making it clear that life is a human right at every stage of development, um, and now having this power go back to the states in a state like Texas, where we've made it clear that life should be protected through all stages. Uh, that's making history, okay? We were a, a part of leading that effort with the Texas Heartbeat Law and other things that created this culture and climate that showed that we could have these type of pro-life laws. We also were supportive of the uh, case that overturned Roe versus Wade at the U.S. Supreme Court. You want to be a part of a legacy, a 10-year legacy, and add to that where you're making history on the life issue. You're making history on religious freedom, on some of these other issues that we're having to take up, right, to save women's sports, to make it clear that mutilating the bodies of children is not the right thing to do, and they can't be left unprotected in our state law. Come work for us, okay? We have a full-time opening for a public policy position. You're going to be lobbying with the most effective team in the state on the issues of faith, family, and freedom. Our office is literally across the street from the Texas Capitol. You can't office any closer than we do um, if, unless you're on staff at the legislature working as a member of the uh, state legislature in the Capitol. And so we're as close as you can get. And that's what you need to do that have that type of influence. And we're putting that investment in that because we know how important it is. We know that government belongs to those who show up. So we have a member of our team at the state Capitol every day of the legislative process. And that's not just to bring a voice to the state legislature and other members of the legislature. Um, and I'm trying to grab my phone here to do my own screen share, excuse me, um, to post and share this on my feed. If you haven't done that already, we ask you to do that as we continue to have this conversation and this timely conversation about some of our issues. I mentioned it, or I think it's in the title here of the um, the video that we're going to talk, we, we mentioned a little bit about the drag queen issue, but also about some rights that you have regarding the issue of Christmas in public schools. That includes being able to say Merry Christmas in public schools. If you'll uh, ex um, uh, excuse me for just a minute, let me share this onto my page to make sure I can give it some more visibility. Um, but it, it includes having Christmas displays, having Christmas parties um, in public schools. And so that might be a surprise to some people. Let me make sure I'm finishing my share here. My phone is uh, is being a little bit difficult with me. Um, that might be a surprise to people, but that's based on a state law that we have here in the state of Texas. That is a Merry Christmas law, you know, sort of appropriately um, titled or categorized. And, and But that's because over the years, people have said you can't have red and green plates at a holiday party in a Texas public school. What? Where does, in the Bible does it say that red and green are religious colors and, and that thou, now this has become a religious view? Now, I understand culturally we the colors red and green have become associated with Christmas. Maybe they already were from the beginning, but I don't know that it's, it's a religious expression. But then again, if you have a party and you single out certain colors because you think they're religious, that is a violation of the constitutional right to free exercise. The government can't say you can speak and talk about issues like holidays and Christmas and say, oh, but not that way if it's religious. They can't single it out because it's religious. So they're not required to have these parties and um, these expressions, but if they allow for them to exist, and, and, and they should, um, they can't single things out because they're religious. And the reason I mention that is because over the years, and I've worked on court cases on these issues um, related to Christmas expressions in public school, um, you have school administrators sort of hide behind some made up phantom uh, analysis of the law that, oh, 
we're not allowing Christmas parties because we can't, the law doesn't allow us to, you know, so they sort of hide behind that. Many of them, they don't want it anyway, or they want to suppress that, but they sort of act like it's not really their decision to make. So their hands are tied. That's not true. That's why we passed the state law in 2013 that makes it clear that schools can have Christmas parties. They can say Merry Christmas to each other. They can have Christmas displays because it's a historical significance, right? It's a cultural issue. The Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court has said that expressions of Christmas in public do not violate any type of uh, establishment clause. It doesn't get the government in trouble. It just allows the government to be neutral and say, you know, we're not going to take sides on this. And it's relevant to this time of, uh, of year and it's relevant and it's a part of the history and the culture of our country and state. So it is appropriate. Don't let anybody tell you any different. All right. And if they try to come up with some reason to not allow it, you reach out to us. OK, we will respond immediately as soon as we can. And we hear from you. And that's a big part of what we try to do this year, um, because our hope is that less school districts will be naughty and more will be nice. See, I messed that up. So less school districts will be naughty and more will be nice. But we see it almost every year. There's an example that comes up and we've got to come in there and make sure people know what the law is. And, and our hope, too, is that it's preventative, not that we want to go waste or have a bunch of time in court on these issues. We want you to be able to go to the website, MerryChristmasTexas.com, print out that one page summary, take it to your school and you can say, look, uh, there shouldn't be an issue here. OK, the law allows these things to happen. And so we're excited about that. Um, and, you know, we had the highlight video in there. It is getting towards the end of the year. We have a matching grant in place, a $50,000 matching grant. Any donations up to $50,000 will effectively be doubled. So please consider doing that. We still have to raise about $500,000 before the end of the year. But there's been a lot of talk about this issue out of Taylor, Texas, that I talked about in the beginning, the dueling Christmas parades, the fact that then the city tried to pass an ordinance that our view is specifically targeted Christians that would have put them in the position of not being able to be involved in these uh, sponsored Christmas parades by the city, which they've been doing for quite some time until the drag queen showed up, until the LGBT groups showed up and tried to make, uh, try to politicize the Christmas parade, and then, you know, really infiltrate it with uh, sexual performances where you know that kids are going to be at these parades. It's not appropriate. Um, and it's sad that they, um, you know, that I, in my view, that they're being, um, you know, very one-sided and selfish in a lot of these situations. And so, um, but we jumped in, we supported some folks in the area. And for now, that vote on that unconstitutional ordinance has been postponed, but um, I expect I'll try to bring it back up again and maybe tweak it in some different ways that I can't imagine it survives constitutional analysis then either, but stay tuned on that. But that's a big part of what we do. We're also getting ready for the state legislative session. So um, that starts on January 10th. We had a training at the state capitol this week where our legislative policy team um, did a presentation for staffers and other people uh, around the capitol so they can understand a little bit more about what's going on on these issues of religious liberty and also um, related to issues of sexuality and pro-life as well. Uh, there's a little teaser in the title of the video this week our Facebook Live as we're uh, simultaneously recording this audio for our weekly podcast about what happened with uh, um, President Biden signing the so-called Marriage Respect for Marriage Act. We're calling it the Disrespect for Marriage Act. I'm told, I didn't see this myself specifically, but I heard people discussing that there was a drag queen at the bill signing ceremony for this piece of legislation that puts uh, same-sex marriage into uh, federal law that refuse to have religious freedom protections along with this law. And it's going to create this standard across the country that if anyone disagrees or does not support same-sex marriage, that they're going to be punished by the government one way or another. That's what a lot of people have wanted for years. Uh, and look, there's nobody was stopping same-sex marriages. I mean, the Supreme Court has opened the door for that since 2015, seven years ago. This was a political move and also a very aggressive move to be in a stronger position as far as in federal law, so people can use this as a weapon to attack people of Christian faith, particularly that uh, have the accurate version of marriage and part of their beliefs, the biblical definition of marriage. So, so often these things revolve around an attack on Christianity and people that are Christian and believe what the Bible says on these particular issues. And so um, we're going to be just find different ways to push back on it. But unfortunately, I think you're going to see a lot of litigation on these issues, which could have been avoided. But um, Democrats and, and some Republicans 
uh, voted in the wrong way and refused to have specific and strong religious freedom protections, even though Senator Mike Lee and others proposed um, uh, amendments that have, would have been ad adequate um, and, and a place to give some people some comfort that our religious rights would be protected. Um, but look, there's a lot of talk about the life issue. When we go into legislative session, they're going to be attacks on our pro-life laws. They're going to try to take away some of the funding, the charitable funding for nonprofit entities that support women and babies. Um, when they're pregnant and then thereafter, more babies are going to be born. We know with the change in laws in Texas, with the Texas heartbeat law, we estimate over 60,000 lives have been saved. A lot of good information there at texasheartbeatlaw.com. But we're getting ready for the legislative session. We've got an opening. If you want to come work for us, we've got a grassroots opening position as well. And we're going to protect uh, parental rights in public schools. We're going to support school choice. We're going to protect in God we trust. We're going to um, push back and make it clear that children shouldn't have their bodies mutilated with gender modification. We're going to save women's sports in college. If you haven't seen some of our work with Riley Gaines, the coll collegiate swimmer who had to race against the guy that started racing as a woman, Leah Thomas, a lot of good information on our website on this and download the app. All right, I'm almost out of time. We're going to have a show next week, oh, even though it gets a little close to Christmas. Um, so tune in for that as you should every week. And this is the best place to find out great information on faith, family, and freedom in Texas. And we'll talk to you next week on the Texas Values Report.